Hello there guys, so uh, in this video I'm going to go over how to uh, do simple uh, constraints or parent constraints for animators and uh, also how to use the studio library and BH ghost tool uh, which are both very useful tools um, that I highly suggest you guys um, use. So uh, yeah, first as you can see in this scene um, we, want, uh, we want David to pick up a ball from this table give it to his other hand and then have that hand place it in a bowl over on uh, this table and uh, as you can see the ball is currently not on the table it's at his feet um, that's because it's important to show you guys um, this one thing so uh, you might think you know oh in order to move the ball onto the table you would just uh, select the ball uh, if I can uh, do that um, <laughs> sorry about this uh, you would just select Select the ball, select the ball, and then uh, move that on there. But that is something you do not want to do actually um, right away because um, uh, because you want to have the channel where um, the actual geometry or where the main control is. You want that to be completely clean. So what you would do is you would actually click the offset group. And uh, sometimes rigs or models don't have an offset group. Uh, like sometimes they're just uh, this. Uh, sometimes they're just the geo or just the main control and uh, in that case what you would do is you would press control on your keyboard and then G and that would create a group that you would then name um, offset but uh, luckily for you guys all of the models and rigs I have made um, for this project uh, do have an offset group so uh, make sure you oh yeah also make sure you have your outliner open uh, that way you'd be e able to easily select these um, objects and uh, things that I am talking about so um, yeah in order to move this onto the table or the counter or whatever you want to call this um, you would select the offset group first then you would move it into place uh, wherever you want I'm just gonna place it right about um, right about here I think that'd be good and uh, then we would go forward a couple frames here in time until his hands are actually on the ball I'm gonna I'm gonna see what frames precisely that is frame six all right, and uh, I'm just going to reposition this so it looks better. And then uh, what what we want now is we want the um, is we want the ball to be picked up by the hand and then follow it uh, through space. And with uh, for that, as you guys know, we're going to need a parent constraint. But uh, similarly to the fact, uh, similarly to um, to the way we uh, picked up the ball using the offset group to geometry or the main control um, and I'll explain why in uh, just a moment but for now what you would do is uh, select the fingers control and the reason I'm selecting the fingers control and not this um, IK arm control is because um, sometimes you might want to pick up an object and then switch your arm between IK and uh, FK mode and uh, and as you can see if we do that and we have it parented to that little IK um, handle right there and we switch back to um, FK that um, IK control it disappears uh, which means that it'll always like stay in that single position and it won't follow the arm like you want it to um, uh, however this fingers control it does it follows um, whatever arm control is active so in IK mode it follows um, that control and in FK mode it uh, follows that this control right here so uh, no matter which mode your uh, limbs are in um, you uh, you always want to parent it to the, the fingers or an extra control that will always be there um, regardless of what mode the um, limb or in this case an arm uh, is in uh, excuse my camera movements and also my uh, stuttery speak uh, speech I am NOT a teacher I'm just doing my best here <laughs> and also having technical issues but anyway so uh, what you want to do is you would select the fingers control right here and then like I said don't select the geometry but select the fingers control and then go over here to the outliner press control on your keyboard not shift because uh, shift would press a lot uh, would like select all of this stuff and you do not want to do that you press the fingers control press the control key on your keyboard and select the offset group and then you would go to constrain 
parent, and instead of just pressing parent, press the little square, you see this little square that's next to it? Click on that, because you have to make sure maintain offset is checked to on, because um, if it's off, then uh, that'll mean whenever you're um, moving your uh, controller, like your hand controller or whatever, um, that'll make the object go like flying and be all like weird and stuff. So you gotta make sure maintain offset is checked on, and then you press add, and now, as you can see, wherever I move this hand control, that ball follows. And now you might be uh, wondering why uh, why I constrained it to the offset group and not the actual um, ball itself. And uh, that's because um, with it parented to the offset group, I can move this hand like this, and then I can move the ball freely wherever I want it to, and it's still it still follows uh, exactly as it's supposed to, just like that. And uh, this is uh, this is important and uh, good if you ever want to like reposition something in the hand or um, rep or just like move something, rotate it, scale it, whatever you want. Um, this you can control freely, um, which again this uh, represents either the geometry of your object or the uh, main base control. And um, then this obviously you can't move freely because uh watch if i try to move this and then i move this it just snaps back into place and um, that's what would happen if you constrain the actual object to the uh, fingers control instead of the offset group so make sure whenever you're um, adding a constraint it's on the offset group all right so uh, now moving on to our next step here, we have them um, bring it over and then hand it to its other hand. Now here uh, we want the uh, object to be constrained to this hand. This is the hand that's going to be controlling um, this ball object from here on out. Um, and so in order to do that, I gotta make sure I'm on the right frame, yep. And uh, just like last time, you uh, select the finger controls, select the offset with uh, with the key with a control key on your keyboard, select the offset group, and then constrain parents, make sure maintain offset is on, and add. And now you might think, oh, that's all I have to do. Now it's parented to both of the uh, both of the controls. But that's a problem. Because as you can see, here in these early parts of the frame, the ball is supposed to be attached to this hand because that's the hand that's controlling it, but it's kind of in the middle. And the reason why is because um is because it's parented to both uh is because like both of the um controls are trying to have uh are trying to be parents over this object and control it. And you can see this more clearly by opening up the offset group, and you can see now it made this offset parent constraint. As you can see, um over here in the fingers, um, um, left and right, it says they're both one, which means that they both have maximum influence over this ball. And uh, uh, oh wait, and um, and yeah, we don't we don't want that. And so um, we don't we don't want that to be a thing. We want um only this hand to be controlling it at first, and then this hand to be controlling it second. So uh, what you would do is you would uh key these because you can actually key these channels by pressing S, just like anything else. Um, press that, and then um this is the left hand over here. So that way, what you would do is you would uh, change the left hand to zero. And now it's fully being controlled by this right control, right hand control over here. And um, obviously, as you guys know, we don't want it to be picked up till um, the hand actually picks it up. So I'm going to go and uh, key this again. And then at frame one, we want that to um, we want that to be not constrained to anything. So both channels will be zero. But oh no, you say the ball is right here. It's like ah, uh, it's it's not you know be it's not working the way we want it to. Um, that's uh, that's it's going all over the place and being wild. Um, that's because um, uh, that's because like you added the constraint and it was right here in this location and. And so um, in order to avoid that, what I would do is uh, I'm actually going to undo all these, uh, all the things we just did real quick um, because I realized I made a mistake. 
um, what you would do is you would select the geometry of the object um, that like you're trying to constrain and then this is where the BH ghost tool comes in this tool is super helpful because um, as you know this is supposed to be the position that the ball needs to be when starting the animation right and so um, what you would do is you would select the object and then over here in the BH ghost tool add selected meshes and then close that meshes button and press ghost the cool thing about this is that it creates a little bit of an outline around the location where uh, the ball is supposed to be or what where it is in this frame, which is uh, very useful, especially um, especially when switching between FK and IK, because then you can like reposition uh, the body and different objects uh, whenever you need to um, like switch between the two, and then you can make like pretty much seamless movement essentially. And so um, now again, we have that outline there, so this will help us um, later on. So we would uh, now go to frame six here, select the uh, fingers, select the offset group, constrain parents. I just did that without pressing the square now because I know that maintain offset is uh, on. And now we fast forward to this frame. And I think it's frame 20, right? Uh, yep. And then you would uh, do the same thing again. Select the fingers controls. Select the offset group. And constrain parent. And then we go back here. And then at frame 6, we want the constraint to be fully to hand, uh, to the right hand, uh, the right fingers. So uh, key these all and switch the left influence to zero. And then uh, since we want the ball to be in that specific location here at frame one, we don't want it to be following the hand like that. Uh, then uh, switch, then key it again and switch this right one also to zero. And then what you need to do is you need to move this object, I guess also rotate it, um, whatever you need to do. And now that you have this outline, it's super easy because you just uh, move the ball over and you try to match it in the exact, almost exact location where the outline is. Sometimes it's a little hard because uh, it's in 3D, but just uh, try your best and um, we should be able to uh, clean up you know any of the mistakes and when we're doing polish and things like that um, yeah <laughs> as you can see it's pretty hard um, especially in like a 3d view like this but um, basically just try and match it up as best as you can um, sometimes it's pretty difficult uh, okay uh, <laughs> Yeah, all right, that's just going to be good for now. So it's back in that spot. And then once you're done with the BH Ghost tool, um, you pr you can press this Bust All button, and that basically deletes the um, ghosting line that was there, and then you can close that out. And so now we have a ball that's on the table and not constrained to, or not following anything right now. So, um, so as you can see, oh... Okay, guys, I realized I actually made a mistake. You're not, uh, when you move the ball back to the location where the uh, BH goes to a line is, you actually have to uh, move the geometry or the main controller. You can't actually move the offset uh, because the offset group doesn't move. That's the one that's constrained. Uh, my bad, guys. I did not realize that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's just move this back into location here. Uh, just like this perfect all right now the ball is there and so now it stays there oh that's right i have to key it that's why all right key the location and then um oh i see i see what happens i i see what the problem is um it's trying to go back to its uh, initial location super I have to do a one frame uh, switch. So uh, key the location of your um, ball or whatever um, right here, and then switch this to zero so that it's back where the constraint is. And so it should now properly work. I mean, it should work. Um, <laughs> okay, well, uh, all right. Um, 
We're just going to pretend like this is working. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. That's okay. Mine is super weird. But um, the basic concept is that like at this frame, frame 5, it should be on the table and it's not constrained to anything because as you can see, uh, these... Oh! I'm dumb. Okay. What? Okay. These are supposed to be zero right here. That's why you also need the one frame switch to um, also be applied to the uh, parent constraint uh, right here. So uh, you would make sure these are both zero um, when they're here. I have no idea where the ball went now. Uh, I went missing. So uh, you do not want. Oh, jeepers. Okay. Um. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, make sure the ball is in the location. There we go. Perfect. All right. So, um, yeah, not only do you have to key the main control and the geometry when you do that one frame switch, but you also have to key the constraints and you got to make sure those are both fully zero before it switches this on this one frame to being, uh, one, which means fully on and, uh, uh which means that this a ball now, uh, being controlled by the offset group will now follow this, uh, hand control which is exactly what we want. And uh, like I said before, you can now um, click bust all on the BH ghost tool. You don't need it. And so now we have him picking up the ball. And then here is where he hands the ball to his other hand. And similarly to what we did before, we want to key this location, key one frame before, and then also do the same thing with the parent constraint. And oh, uh, click that there. And now here, it's going to be switching between the right hand and the left hand. And so the right hand needs to be zero and the left hand needs to be one. That way now, as you can see, the left hand fully controls the ball. It's perfect. So we have the ball, um, we have the hand picking up the ball here, handing it to its uh, left hand. And now the ball goes over here and and this is where we want it to, um, we want the hand to let go of the ball and it to fall into the bowl. And for that now, it's a sphere. And then we would also uh, ghost this. You got to make sure you ghost this with the BH ghost tool so you get the um, position correct here. And um, then you uh, then you go to the next frame, 36, and you turn, uh, as you can see, the influence is right on the left hand, but we want it to be on no hands now. So you switch that to zero, but of course we also need to make sure we have the one frame switch so that things don't go weird. to be in correct position and right about good the ball doesn't have uh the ball isn't in A bowl. Obviously, it's not the best animation, but um, you know, you guys get the idea. That's how constraints work. So um, yeah, that's how you. That's how the parent constraint um, constraints work. And uh, you can again bust this BH ghost tool. And um, now we're going to move on to see um, how would you constrain the hand to an object. Like if you want an object to drive um, a controller, how would you do that? Uh, well, I'm going to show you in this uh, next example. So if you open this example here, um, it's, it should look a little familiar as this is something we're doing in our scene um, where basically there, this is the, a door and we want um, our character's hand to be placed on the door and the door to like drive the motion. And so um, what we do, I already have some animation for, um, for Amy here so that she places her hand on the door is we want to get, uh, so we want to get the hand in position right here on the handle. And then you would think, oh, just constrain this control to the door, right? 
Uh, well, remember from our last exercise that, uh, or our last example, we don't want to constrain anything unless it has an offset group. And you might think, oh, then use this group. But no, as you can see, that selects everything in, in the rig. We only want to select this one hand control. So well, how would we do that, you ask? Well, what we need to do is we want to create a locator. Um, a locator is basically a very uh, low poly, um, low resolution like control basically that can easily control controls um it's <laughs> pretty complicated to understand but uh just bear with me and we'll walk through it so uh what you do is you need to go up to create and then locator and now you have a locator down here at the base and remember we need an offset group so press Control g and make this offset and just for organization's sake, I'm going to uh, name this R underscore hand lock, lock short for locator. And um, then what you need to do is you press the offset group of the locator and then control select, or sorry, shift select the um, hand controller here on the uh, IK hand. And then you want, because we want the offset, uh, offset group of the locator to be in the same position of this hand right here. So what you do is you go to modify, match transformations, and then match all transformations. And that'll, um, you can't really see it because off, uh, because locators are really, really tiny, but that now, as you can see, teleported um, the offset group and the locator to be in the exact same position as this control is, which is good, which is, uh, that's exactly um, what we want to happen. So now um, what you do is we want this locator, we want the locator to be the thing that's controlling the um, hand, so, um, so we want this hand control to be uh, this locator. What you do is you would select the locator and then shift select the hand control uh, because the locator is the parent in this case. And then press, um, oh, I'm in the wrong menu here. Uh, select parent, make sure maintain off is off again. And then add. So now this locator is the th uh, is the controller that's controlling the hand. This is uh, this controller is no longer relevant because uh, this controller is what's controlling the hand. Um, that's really good. And uh, oh yeah, you want to remove the keys you have on the controller. You know, that's fine um, because uh, now we want the door to control the movement of the hand, um, which means that it has to control the locator. But obviously, we can't have it constrained to the locator, otherwise, we can't move the locator and thus can't move the hand. So, what you would do um, in this case, you would select the door and then select the offset group of the locator. And then you would constrain the offset group to the door. So now, whenever wherever the door moves, the hand moves. And then, you know, obviously, um, obviously, you know, just as before, you go to like, you know, whatever frame, then you open it, and then, you know, it can open the door just like that. And then you already know how to turn the uh, parent constraint on and off, so I won't be redundant to go uh, doing that. But yeah, this basically, uh, this P cube one, uh, basically anything that has uh, over here in this channel box that um, has a one W zero, whatever, and uh, this number next to it, that's basically saying that that's a, uh, that's a constrained channel that, um, that the object is uh, now constrained to so we have this offset group that is uh, constrained to this door and of course um, yeah I won't go over how to turn that on and off because you already know how to do that so um, yeah that's how to constrain um, a part of the rig such as the hand to an already existing um, object or um, 
when it doesn't have its own offset group. Now let's go over how to use the Studio Library tool, which in my opinion is a very useful and very awesome tool that I think everybody, every animator needs to use. All right, so in this example, we have our rig Sam here, and he's doing this uh, simple little wave animation. As you can see, I'm utilizing uh, multiple controls in this example, um, namely just like this elbow and, um, or no, this shoulder and elbow control. And um, yeah, so we have animation happening on both of those keys and uh, what we want to do is we want to um, be able to save this animation so that we can copy it and then paste it onto this rig because uh, sometimes when you're going uh, in between files you want to um, copy and paste animation uh, that way you don't have to keep uh, redoing it over and over and over uh, the studio library tool makes it super simple you can uh, where you can like copy and paste um, both poses and animation. It's really cool. So uh, the studio library looks like this with these little squares and stuff. And just wait for it to open. Da, 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 da. And uh, by default, it's um, it uh, like has its own um, folders set up based on uh, based on the location you select when uh, you select like the path here and everything. Um, right now, I already have um, things set up in um, an assignments uh, library folder, so I'm just going to save that to this. So then, uh, what you want to do is you select the controls that uh, that have the animation you want to save on. Uh, for me, as you can see, I only have animation on this elbow and and this uh, shoulder control. So I'm going to select these and then there's a little plus icon here. You press the plus and as you can see, yeah, you can save poses and also animation. In this case, we want to save the animation. So you click animation and uh, as you can see, our animation goes from frame zero to frame 31, uh, which automatically the studio library picks up. And uh, so you yeah, want to make sure the frame range is the animation that you want to save. Um, but you can also change it uh, if you want. Like for instance, if I wanted to save only up to frame 24, I can do that. And now only frame zero through 24 is being saved. Um, but of course I want to save all of the frames. So um, you do that and then uh, by frame, that's basically just um, for baking things. It's, it's more complicated stuff um, that you don't really have to worry about. Uh, but yeah, before pressing save, you got to add a name to it. So I'm just going to uh, name this one example anim. And then you click, uh, oh, and then you make sure you have a little thumbnail there uh, so you can uh, easily identify the animation that you're saving. And as you can see, the thumbnail is not just one picture, it's an animation, so it actually shows you uh, the things that are moving, which is super helpful. And uh, then you press save. Okay, so sometimes there's an error where uh, the animation can't save. Um, in that case, just try re-downloading the Studio Library tool, um, and then... Yeah, I guess doing that. Um, I guess for now we're gonna save a pose instead of an animation. Um, so uh, in that case, you would press the plus and press pose. And the concept is, is the same for saving animation, just uh, for some reason, uh, Studio Library decided to stop working on my computer for some reason. Um, so I'm going to get a thumbnail there, name it pose, uh, pose whatever. Um, and then I press save. And as you can see, it appears right here, pose whatever, with the thumbnail of the pose you just saved. So now if we go over to another file and we, uh, and we open up the studio library, it's right there. Our pose whatever is right there. This also works with, um, again, this also works with animation. I uh, just didn't work on my system for some reason. It should, but I don't know why. And so uh, now what you need to do is, um, is the, uh, Studio Library doesn't recognize um, that there's a rig here right away, and so you got to select like basically any control on the rig um, because uh, because uh, right now, as you can see, there's nothing for Studio Library to, to select. So you select any control on the rig. That way, this it activates this menu right here, um, so that Studio Library knows okay, it's uh, we're trying to apply the animation or the pose to this rig, and so uh, now you do that, and uh, if you and then. You you um, right click on the pose here 
and you press select content. That way the, uh, the controls that you selected to save before are selected and you hit apply. And if this were the animation, if I were to play it out, would be the exact same animation that we have in this file. Um, but uh, as you guys saw, the animation didn't really work, so it only worked with uh, poses. But it should work with animation for you guys. Um, if not, again, like I said, try um, removing and reinstalling the studio library. Uh, sometimes Maya is just really weird and has glitches like that. So, uh, yeah, I hope this was super helpful. Um, this was uh, just the basics of how to do parent constraints, how to use the BH Ghost tool, and also how to use the uh, Studio Library tool. Um, thank you guys uh, so much for listening, and uh, yeah, hope the, the your projects and shots go along really well. Yeah.